Overdrive today, we take a look at all the electric concepts from Mahindra and Mahindra showcased on Independence Day and take a drive in the newly launched Hyundai Tucson. Hello and welcome to Overdrive. I am Soini Dath. Now, Mahindra and Mahindra has had very interesting product launches every year on Independence Day, but this year they have gone all out by launching two new electric sub brands and the SUVs will be hitting a market between 2024 and 2026 and it is time for us to check out the Inglo platform that these SUVs will be based on and also let's take a look at the concepts. So this is the new Inglo architecture. This is their skateboard architecture that will power, that will motivate all these concept vehicles because they're all going to enter production. There are five of them but we'll come to that later. Right now, first, let's take a look at the skateboard architecture. It is very important. So why Inglo? In for India, Glo for global. So it's an Indian global platform. Essentially, they, are, uh, develop they have developed this with Volkswagen. So Volkswagen has the MEB toolkit, the electric toolkit. So they have borrowed components from there and they have developed their own as well. So essentially, what this uses right here is a lithium ferrous phosphate or a lithium iron phosphate battery pack it's not the same as lithium ion it's different it has almost four to five times the life and it's also a safer chemistry so that is what makes it more important and uh, the other big claim to fame of course is that their skateboard architecture is actually quite lightweight uh, you're looking at between 2.5 to 2.7 tons for the entire vehicle not just the skateboard for, but for the entire vehicle and that's for their biggest vehicle that they will build on this now this is of course a modular platform which means that the front section remains the same the rear section remains the same but they can obviously alter the skateboard in between and give you different wheelbases so there are two wheelbase uh, options uh, one is a 2762 and other is a 2775 millimeter option so 13 millimeter difference between the two and in terms of the battery capability there'll be uh, battery capacity there'll be about 60 to 80 kilowatt capacity options and you're looking at a WLTP range of about 450 kilometers. This system will also support or is compatible with 175 kilowatt fast charging, which means that 0 to 80 percent can be achieved in about half an hour. In terms of the power outputs, well, the power outputs are actually quite interesting. Now, this is predominantly a rear wheel driven platform, but you can also have an all wheel drive option on this. For the rear wheel drive uh, options, uh, you can expect between 230 to 260 PS of power output and for the all wheel drive, you're looking at between 340 to 400 PS of power output. With this architecture, Mahindra will also be gunning for a 5 star safety rating and they have also made sure that they are using high strength boron steel to make sure that the battery compartment is completely isolated and is very safe uh, in case of a collision. You also see three screens, three 12.3 inch screens. So essentially apart from these screens, now we have seen the 12.3 inch screens uh, even in the XUV700, but apart from that, you will also receive the required computing power for uh, you know these screens. So essentially there are three high speed computers that will work with the battery management system, with the infotainment, etc. They are all running dual octa-core processors. These screens are gonna have 1920p resolution. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of connected tech. It's also 5G compliant, etc. Now, this is the basic architecture. Let's also take a look at the different vehicles that they will build atop this architecture. So this right behind me is the XUV E8. It's an electric vehicle and it looks like an electrified XUV 700. This particular prototype is not exactly on the Inglo platform. They have sort of put things together to you know sort of give us an idea of what the performance would be like when you drive this car if you look at the silhouette if you look at the lines they are all xuv 700 and if you look at the lights essentially what you get is this big led signature that goes from one pillar to the other this actually does turn into a turn blinker but it's only the top section of course all of these rough edges will be cleared out cleaned out uh, before the launch and when is the launch December 2024. They have set the timeline. This vehicle will be launched by December 2024. Even lower down in the bumper, you will see the vertical detailing. That seems to be a signature for these new electric vehicles from Mahindra. You will see the golden Twin Peaks logo uh, or bronze or copper Twin Peaks logo 
call me color blind i don't know but yeah this is that logo is on the hub this is an aerodynamic wheel and the tires are a 245 45 r20 but this is you know exactly uh, what the production vehicle will sort of look like and even at the rear you see the xuv 700 kind of uh, you know tail lights continued here it's not what we saw on the uh, on the e9 it's not that kind of a signature these are this is the same tail end as the xuv 700 so to speak but the cabin is different let me quickly get into the cabin and show you what's changed there what you do see is three screens essentially what you get is a speedometer in here it will also tell you what gear you've selected the range the battery all of that it will give you it will give you the uh, multi pane layout that we saw on the XUV 700 and then there'll be a third in, uh, infotainment screen and that's for the passenger so three screens three 12.3 uh, uh, inch screens that you get here otherwise everything else looks like uh, what we've seen in the XUV 700 again So we are going to have a go at the XUV E8. It's a prototype, and there comes to life rather silently. The only thing making sounds is are the wings. Yeah, gets off the mark very silently, just the way you expect electric vehicle to be. The acceleration feels pretty good, and the handling manners. again it doesn't feel too heavy they're hinting it would be around 2.5 2.6 tons when the inglo platform is properly integrated with this car but uh, yeah it doesn't feel too heavy i mean it's feeling nice and agile in fact it's feeling almost like the regular xuv 700 almost feels like it's a regular petrol or diesel vehicle and they've just sort of muted the powertrain it's that's how natural it feels and uh, no regenerative braking it's just got the regular brakes and they feel perfectly natural don't feel too wooden or anything so yeah very natural feeling overall package that's how i will put it we'll take a very quick break here on the show but coming up on the other side we get you a closer look at the battery electric concepts from mahindra and also the xuv e9 concept stay with us you're watching overdrive Welcome back here with us on Overdrive. Now just before this break we brought you details about the Inglo platform that these new electric SUVs will be based on and now it's time for us to get you a closer look at the new XUV E9 concept and also the battery electric vehicles the sportier range of the electric vehicles from Mahindra. Let's take a look. What is in front of me is the Mahindra XUV E9 concept. So compared to the E8 concept that we showed you a little while back which looks like an electrified XUV 700 this one is different this one sits on a longer wheelbase to begin with the E8 is a 2762 mm wheelbase this is a 2775 so that's 13 mm longer on the wheelbase it's also longer in terms of the body length and while the E8 was a regular crossover standard crossover this is a coupe crossover uh this also get this seamless LED strip that's going to be the daytime running lights this i think is going to double up as a turn blinker and in the headlamp cluster you get a projector beam up top and a three pot arrangement at the bottom you will see more detailing there on the grill more vertical detailing and then you have this bronze scuff plate at the bottom and then you see a similar treatment on the window line moving to the rear what you see is something that might seem a bit like the Kia EV6 in terms of the design you know the design template might seem a little like that especially with that seamless tail light and that panel coming out like that it's a bit ev6 in my opinion but i think it looks very smart looks very hot on this particular concept these wheels aerodynamic wheels completely blocked off these are 20 inch in diameter i'll also quickly give you a glimpse of the cabin so it gets those three screens that we talked about on the inglo platform so those three screens also find their way in the XUV E9 This is the new Mahindra BE05 concept vehicle B that is BE you can call it battery electric so this is the B05 it is a sports car on stilts as Pratap like uh, Pratap Bose the designer likes to call it 
and you can see it in the form you know very aerodynamic surfaces very uh, prominent lines chisel lines and it all looks quite good and what you see behind this translucent panel is radars front facing cameras because this is going to have level 2 ADAS tech what you see here is swipe to connect I think these are going to be those discrete door handles so just swipe and they will open uh, you see that at the rear as well trap to open the charge port it's going to have a rear mounted charge port like I told you when I showed you details of the platform it's going to have 175 kilowatt fast charging capability as well the rear again something like what we saw on the E9 you get this seamless LED strip and you get this large panel in between but this LED light it continues all the way here to create a more unique signature compared to the E9 so like I said very sporty looking vehicle rolls on 21 inch wheels and the BEO5 is going to go into production by October 2025 is the and that's the timeline that Mahindra has set for themselves this is the BEO7 concept now this slots right in between the BEO5 and the BEO9 and the silhouette clearly suggests that this is going to be a five-seater crossover SUV that's for the family again uh, we see a different front end compared to the BEO5 and the BEO9 the LED signature almost remains the same but the treatment given to the center panel is very different it's not as upright not as in your face as the BEO9 and not as exaggerated or not as sporty as the BO5. It's going to be that typical Mahindra DNA where it will have all-wheel drive, it will be able to take you to places that look difficult for other soft loaders and it will have again the range stopping specs that this platform has to offer. So you're looking at between 360 to 400 PS of power, you're looking at the 80 kilowatt hour battery pack and the charging port for which is going to be right here, right in the front. And unlike the BEO9, which had a black panel, this is body colored right here. So at the rear, you have a spoiler, a roof spoiler that's very similar to what we saw on the BEO5. You also have a similar mesh detailing. And then on top, you will see a full glass roof and roof rails as well. But all in all, I think this is a very good looking vehicle. I think this looks the most balanced. This will find the most appeal in terms of the three uh, B concepts because this is going to be the family vehicle. This is the largest concept uh, right now on the B sub brand from Mahindra and this is the B09. So what Mahindra is envisioning this as is a Grand Tourer, a GT and it's essentially what we saw on the B05 so you get those big 21 inch wheels and you get a similar lighting signature it's just got a more imposing front end uh, compared to the BEO5. I think the dimensions are going to be slightly different as well. Uh, you know, even the tech shield bit, we saw it in translucent panels there. And you get a body colored panel, you get the uh, B logo sitting there quite prominently. Active aero, so, you know, these are going to be flaps that open. Uh, so that's why the active aero and again the radar tech is going to be behind this little translucent panels at aero bridge continues to be there even on the BEO9 you also get the similar wing cameras but here instead of the BEO5's two screens you get the full three screen setup and it's going to have the big digital speedometer ref counter etc there's also going to be the infotainment in between and there's going to be one infotainment for the passenger seat and uh, I'm also told that the third infotainment, that the one for the passenger, uh, is also going to be compatible with uh, video input from a laptop, from a gaming console, etc. So, you know, they can entertain themselves, they can take Zoom calls if required, and uh, it's angled in such a way that it ideally won't disturb uh, the, the driver. And again, all that detailing continues here in the bumper as well. So that is the B09. This is the top of the line, of course. So this is, now that nine doesn't stand for a nine seater or anything. It is going to be a five seater. And essentially, uh, it's going to run an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack. You're looking at a 450 odd WLTP driving range. This is going to be the top of the line in terms of the tech spec. So it's going to have all wheel drive. It's going to have close to 400 horsepower. And it's going to go up on spec against cars like the e-tron uh, and the e-tron uh, Sportback it's going to be a feature-rich value-for-money alternative that you will get from Mahindra. Well, I'm certainly 
looking forward to these electric breed of SUVs from Mahindra. I'm sure you are as well. We'll take a very quick break here on the show. But coming up on the other side, we tell you how the new 2022 Hyundai Tucson feels like to drive on the road. Stay with us. You're watching Overdrive. Welcome back here with us on Overdrive. The Hyundai Tucson has been around for nearly two decades, but it has not managed to garner that much success. But the 2022 version of the Tucson now comes with ADAS features. So should you go out and buy one? Bird has the answer. The entry premium SUV segment. Now that's a segment that's not very crowded. You've got the Compass and the Citroen weighing for space. Now you've got a new entry into that segment. This, this is the Hyundai Tucson. Now the Tucson nameplate is something you'd probably be familiar with because this started off life in India way back in 2004 when the first generation came in. And we've seen three generations of the Tucson in India coming down to this, the fourth generation. Apart from its good looks though, how is it to drive? Well, that's what I'm here in Bengaluru around the Nandi Hills to see what the Tucson feels like, well, when you're behind the steering wheel. So, shall we get on with it then? This new SUV has been developed on Hyundai's third generation compact or other N3 platform. Now, what this platform essentially does is it enhances uh, safety, space, comfort, drivability, and a host of other features that you would want in an SUV of this order. What makes the Tucson unique in this segment is the fact that it's the only one to offer level 2 advanced driver assistance systems in addition to an all-wheel drive powertrain and of course you get a choice of both petrol and diesel engines. Now the Tucson that I'm driving, well this comes with the 2-litre common rail direct injection diesel and this makes about 186 PS of max power with 416 Newton meters of max torque, which is more than adequate, more than adequate for any driving duties. The petrol on the other hand, well, that's, that's got about 156 PS of max power with the 192 Newton meters of max torque, which may not sound like much, but it's more than enough. The Hyundai Tucson will be offered with just two transmission options. There is an 8-speed automatic which is mated to the diesel engine and there's the 6-speed automatic which is combined with the petrol. Previous generations of the Tucson, from what I recollect, had slightly softer suspension settings. So there was a fair amount of front-end dive, body roll that you'd sense in those SUVs, but a lot of those have been ironed out in the new Tucson. You get a host of safety features on board like six airbags, you've got, uh, well, hill descent control, and of course, a crash structure that is probably one of the best you can get in this segment. But the most important aspect is the advanced driver assistance system. And this adds in a host of features to ensure your driving is as safe as it can be. The Tucson also offers you a host of driving modes, roughly around seven of them. And this has to do with both uh, well, on-road driving as well as off-road driving. Now, on on-road driving, you can press a button and select, well, between eco, normal, sport or smart. And then there are the terrain modes where you can select between snow, mud or sand conditions to drive on. The Tucson is about 1.8 meters wide and on a trail this narrow, that width can get quite tricky. But here's where the cameras effectively come into play and allow you to see where you're going. I'm trying hard to avoid the field that I'm driving right next to. I don't want to kill the crops. But at the same time, I'm trying very hard not to go overboard and slide down that drop. And it's got about 192, 195 mm of ground clearance. That may sound like it's a lot, 
but do keep in mind that it's also got reasonably long overhangs so approach and departure angles can be a little tricky now here's what i'm trying to do there's a severe lip in there well i'm trying not to scrape the underbelly that means moving through this slowly ouch i did here a bit of it scrape but we came away clean well the tucson makes a very compelling case for itself if you are looking for a car did i forget to mention it's striking good looks you're looking for a great cabin space with great interiors you're looking for well good engines both diesel and petrol which are refined frugal and of course powerful and torquey as well you're looking for something that offers you well all wheel drive and all wheel drive power train you're looking for something that offers you the advanced driver assistance systems and a ton of features which Hyundai traditionally puts into all of its vehicles Well, then the Tucson probably takes all those boxes for you. But we've also exclusively driven the Hyundai Creta, the one that will be coming to India pretty shortly. Don't forget to check that story out on our YouTube channel. That's it then from us on this week's edition of Overdrive. But remember, you can stay in touch with the team through Facebook, Twitter, as well as YouTube, and you can follow our latest updates on Instagram. We'll see you next week. Until then, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.